decades ago, I was told by one of my lecturers, there's always one meaning to a parable. And the challenge is finding what that meaning is and what Jesus is trying to get across. And I think in the parable that Simon's going to read soon, uh, we're going to be able to think about the context in which Jesus shared that story he made up to help the people there at that time. Just as importantly are these verses that Simon's now going to read now that followed on from the parable, and then we're going to go back to it. Thank you, Simon. Luke 12, verse 22. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or what your body, or what you will wear. Life is more than food, and the body more than clothes. Consider the ravens. They do not sow or reap. They have no storeroom or barn, yet God feeds them. And how much more valuable are you than the birds? Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to your life? Since you cannot do this very little thing, why do you worry about the rest? Consider how the lilies grow. They do not labor or spin. And yet, I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, how much more will he clothe you, O you of little faith? And do not set your heart on what you will eat or drink. Do not worry about it. For the pagan world runs after such things, and your father knows that you need them. But seek his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. Do not be afraid, little flock, for your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the poor. Provide purses for yourselves that will not wear out, a treasure in heaven that will not be exhausted, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Brilliant. Now, just before Simon does the next reading, when I first uh, looked at the passage for today and then read on, I was taken back to when I was 13 years old in a secondary school in East London. And the Gideons came to take uh, an assembly in this secondary school, right? Now, Walthamstow is a very interesting part of uh, uh, London to grow up in, and schooling, it was quite interesting as well at times. But at the end of the day, Mr Lynch, my, uh, head of our, our class, came into the class with a box full of Gideon Bibles. And it was like a game of rugby, because he just took each one and... <laughs> we all go, yeah! And going everywhere, diving around the classroom to get hold of our Gideon's Bible, you see. And I took it home uh, and um, I had and um, up in our loft, which my, my family will now go, oh, my goodness, up in the loft, I have a, a box full of Bibles and that my grandma had. Um, I put this Gideon's Bible in. But before I put it in there, I turned to a page and it was that reading I found. Do not worry about tomorrow as each day has enough worries of its own. And it kind of uh, stayed with me. Uh, from that day forth. Brilliant. And now we're going to have the parable uh, of the rich fool in the context of what Jesus then said afterwards. So this is Luke 12, verse 13 to 20. Someone in the crowd said to him, teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. And Jesus replied, man, who appointed me a judge or an arbiter between you? Then he said to them, watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. And he told them this parable. The, the ground of a certain rich man produced a good crop. He thought to himself, hmm, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I will do. I will tear down my barns and build, the, build bigger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of good things laid up for many years. Take life easy, eat, drink and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. And then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with anyone who stores up things for himself that is not rich towards God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you so much. Giving what we have 
and expect to see kingdom riches. Just keep that phrase in mind, okay? Give in what we have and expect to see uh, kingdom riches. Now, you could say, well, that parable kind of stands of its own and we can just go on to the next hymn now and have coffee early, <laughs> you know? Um, uh, it did cross my mind, uh, but I didn't think I'd get away with it. Um, so what title would you give that parable? Okay, what title would you like to give that parable? The farmer with the wrong kind of riches in mind? Where is your storehouse? Where is my storehouse? The eternal perspective. That's a good deep phrase for a Sunday morning. Planning for the future. What to bear in mind based on that story that Jesus told. Are you... Am I, are we rich toward God? Are we rich towards God in what we give? And as always with Jesus, he was very pastoral, but also very political in the way he answered some of the stuff he was asked. So when that family member shouted out, tell my family to split all the money fairly, blah, blah, blah. He did not deal with that issue at all. He just came out and told this story. And he told the story because he knew there's something at that point that he was wanting to say to the people. And the problem is that we weren't there at the time and we don't always fully understand the culture that Jesus was speaking that into, the crowd of people that were around him at the time, the hoo-ha that was going on, the politics that were happening with the religious leaders in what they were thinking of Jesus. But he knew what he had to say and he spoke to everybody in that crowd as well as addressing that guy that shouted out, tell my family to split the money properly. Giving what we have and expecting to see kingdom riches going beyond what we may be thinking. So let's look at the rich man briefly, okay? Think about him, think about that farmer. He was one with material riches, you know? He had a bumper crop that year. He was overrun by grain. Everywhere he went, there was just more grain. Wow, this is so exciting. He was overrun with material riches. God had blessed that farm that year with all that grain. For Thunder, for, not Thunderburst, for Star Trek fanatics, let's go back to the Tribbles. Do you remember the Tribbles? They just popped up everywhere, didn't they? Some of you are going, no, don't understand that at all. But if you're a Star Trek fanatic, they just were everywhere. There was just grain everywhere on this farm. He was overrun with God's blessing. Just remember that God had blessed his farm. And then he started to use human wisdom. Mm -mm. <laughs> you know, do you ever talk to yourself? Oh, yes. You, you always get so much more done when you talk to yourself. Uh, and... Um, um, Yes, I have been known to talk to myself. There was a job, I, I used to work in the city, one of the jobs I used to do in the city, it was so boring, you had to talk to yourself to keep yourself going, really. Um, but this is what this farmer did. He decided to apply human wisdom. I know what I can do in this situation. I've got my plan, it's a cunning plan. I'm gonna store this grain and it's gonna be here for a long time and we're gonna be all right because he was thinking to himself, I just have no place to store all these crops. Got to do something about it. This is what I will do, human wisdom again. I will tear down my present barns and I will build bigger barns to store all this grain because it was his grain to do with as he wanted and it was going to make life cushy for him. It would be there for many years. He would not have to worry. He would be able to take life easy enjoy stuff, sit back and just enjoy that good year that God had given him with all that grain now stored up on his land, sitting there doing piddly squeak all, if I can use that phrase. So he can eat, drink and be merry. But in the parable, the story that Jesus made up, Jesus was quite blunt and said, you fool, you fool. Because that very night, your soul 
will depart. That's a very blunt way to say he was going to die. Your soul will depart. And then what's going to happen with all this grain that you've been storing up and you've been having a merry life over? How are you going to see that benefiting anybody at all? Because you won't. You'll be dead. It's just been sitting there waiting for you to die, you fool. And then who will own it? Well, it won't be him. It'd be other people, maybe some family members. No doubt it'd be sold off. No doubt it would be shared out and other people will benefit from it. But that farmer will not know any of that because he'll be uh, in a tomb somewhere dead. So what Jesus was going on to say in that parable was this. So who is the person who stores up treasures for themselves and is not rich towards God? Who is the person that stores up treasures to himself, all that grain in the barn, but not rich towards God who had given it to him in the first place? So all that we have in life is given to us by God because he's allowed it to be given to us. The chairs you sit on, the pavements you walk on, you know, wherever we go, the food we eat is all there because of God's blessing on us. And God was, Jesus was saying in this parable, he just stored everything up that I had given to him because he kept it to himself and didn't share those riches with those around him. The farmer thought he had it all, but he was about to lose it all, literally lose it all. Giving what we have and expecting to see God's riches. What have we got that we could also share and expect to see God's riches come from that beyond our understanding? So what plans do you and I have? What kind of riches do we have? Not just, you know, bank account riches, but other riches in talents and skills, in resources. In what ways are we storing up our riches? <laughs> in like in the barn, just keeping them there. And when I say the word riches to you, what do you see flashing before your eyes or going off in your head? What does that word riches mean to you? For that farmer, it was the grain, as Jesus told that parable. And um, I nearly said after the break, after the next song, <laughs> it's not a TV program, after the next song, we're going to start to unpack what it may mean for us in using the riches God has given us that will mean giving what we have to get the hint here and expect to see God's kingdom's riches be shown to those around us and who we engage with day by day. So we're going to stand and sing together um, Waymaker. And it's a great song that reminds us about God is moving. Thank you. Have a seat. Then Jesus said to his disciples, therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or about your body, what you will wear. For life is more than food and the body more than clothes. So that's what Jesus said just after sharing that parable about the farmer storing up the grain, keeping it to himself. Come that night and he's sitting there being happy and merry. He died. And never saw the benefits of all that grain that God had given him being stored up in that barn he just kept it all sitting there doing piddly squeak all and we're going to take that story a bit further now and i've got three volunteers who are going to come and join us um well, no not yet that was it ben you stay down no no we've got two sets of volunteers helping today so ian i've got sue and susan are coming to join yes i should have clarified the volunteers thank you for that correction you're going to wish you had come up in a moment, possibly. Right, have a seat. They really don't know what's going to happen there, but they're trusting me, which is uh, well, a brave sign. Okay. I'm going to give each of you an envelope. Okay, if you can just put it on your lap. Okay, don't muck around with the envelope or anything else. Or pastel shades. We quite like the pastel shades, which is quite nice. There we are. Great. Um, I'm just going to do that. Great. Okay. I have 
I, I know. This is, look at Susan already. She and I, I knew I was onto a winner when I asked Susan to come and help. I said there could be something to your benefit involving food. And that's all I mentioned. And look, it is a marvellous creation, jelly popping candy, Cadbury's bar. I was quite excited about that. My teeth weren't. Um, or the dentist. Now, I have here a two pound bar of chocolate. Okay, it costs not in weight, but in money. Okay, it cost me two pounds to buy that. On your lap is an envelope. Each of you got an envelope in your lap. I'd like you to carefully open it and just look in the top of it to see between the two pieces of card, if there is anything there that would help you buy this. Don't take anything out. I just want you to look in and I don't want anybody next to you to know what you've got in there. So keep strong, okay? Right. So in those envelopes, there might be something in there to help them buy this bar of chocolate, okay? But it has to be in your envelope alone, okay? Does what you have in your envelope. If there is money in there, because we don't know, okay? Will it buy your, this bar of chocolate? Ian, in your envelope, will it buy this two pound bar of chocolate? Buy some of it. So, some of it, okay, but not all of it. Don't, okay, that's fine, we can stop me. Susan, chocolate lover extraordinaire, queen of chocolate. Have you enough money, if you've got money in your envelope, to buy this two pound bar of chocolate? Half of it? Oh. But not all of it, I'm only selling the whole bar. Okay, soon. In your pastel shaded envelope, specifically chosen for this morning, have you enough money in there to buy this two pound bar of chocolate? Just some of it? Oh, bless, but not all of it. Okay, great. <laughs> Our next song. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> right, back to the Bible. <laughs> Giving what we have and expecting to see kingdom riches. How do you think they could have this bar of chocolate? Okay. Share this. There's one problem before they can share this. I'm not going to give it to them. What do they need to do, Rich? Right. Okay. So do you want to have a chat to see if you want to work together to buy? Oh, Susan's in there. Susan's in there. Okay. You could buy half as much again of my two pound bar of chocolate in money, not weight. Okay, so how much money have you got altogether? You got three pounds. Another trip to Sainsbury's. Yeah, um, you'd have to break in half and walk out. That's only with half of it. Okay, so I need two pound to buy this bar, to sell this bar of chocolate to you three on your own. That wasn't, wasn't possible. By working together, it is possible with money left. It's a good deal. So who's got two pounds? Susan has. <laughs> there we are. Susan, I shall give you the cabbage dairy milk marvellous creation jelly popping candy. Okay. That has been paid for by the three of you. For you three to share. She's already breaking it up already. Uh, okay. To share it. Okay. And you have a pound left at the end as well. So the three of you uh, can have some of that chocolate. You carry on sharing it. Sue, what would you like to do with the pound you've got left? No, you, no, you, can, you can decide. You can decide what to do with that pound, okay? I'd like, I don't want it back. I don't want it back, no. So you've got a bar of chocolate. It only costs two pounds. They've got a pound left. And Sue can now decide what she wants to do with that pound in some way, okay? Right, once they've given it out, so you can keep it, honestly. You put it in the collection, that's very kind of you. Uh, gift aid if you want, there's another 25 pence on top of it, okay? Great. Well, give them a round of applause as they take their chocolate back. Not too much slurping and crunching, please. I should have got the one with honeycomb in it. Okay. Okay. Do you see kind of the principle you're trying to bring out here, actually? When we hold on to the stuff in the barn on our own, don't go far, does it? When we work together as part of God's family, we can do with more. We can do more than we thought we could achieve because we come together and we work together. Giving what we have 
and expecting to see kingdom riches. I knew chocolate would pull people in, but if you think about it, they did get the chocolate. They've gone away blessed, hopefully, and they had some money left that they could still do something with. That would took it beyond what they thought they could achieve, extending God's kingdom by the riches that we have. You see, Jesus was sharing that about man's carefully laid out plans don't come to much if you then die that night. That's the end. God's plans, where we are working together with God and with his family, will go beyond our understanding. Um, this may please you or may worry you, but I'm standing here today because of a person called Mary Morris. Right, you've never heard of Mary Morris. I had to really go through my brain cells to remember her name. In 1985, the Mary Morris Fund in America paid for my two years fees to go to Moreland's College as a student and then paid half of my third year fees. I've never met Mary Morris. I don't know why that fund had been set up. I've ne I never met the people in America who paid for that, but because Mary Morris Fund paid my fees to go and get my dip dips, my diplomas in those days for Moreland's College, it meant that I landed up ironically working at Moreland's for two years, did all those years with Scripture Union as a youth and children's family evangelist, worked for the Diocese of Winchester, doing all the stuff I'm doing now, live here in this part of Bournemouth, met Claire, and we had two daughters. Mary Morris will never know about that. It's extending God's kingdom beyond our understanding of the riches that we may achieve. One commentator came out and said this, God is gracious to all, not just his children. God is gracious to all, not just his children. He wants us to offer God's goodness to those beyond those who are in God's family. He wants us to show his love and live out that love and express that love by not keeping the grains in the barn to ourselves. So what riches do you and I have? Giving what we have and expecting to see kingdom riches. I have. This is it, Ben. This is your moment. <laughs> He's ready for action, Ben. He's like a Thunderbird puppet. <laughs> there are five people sitting in the church today who have money bags. And in those money bags, they've got pound coins. They're now going to give everybody in church now a pound coin from that mo those money bags. So Susan's got it. David's got it down that end. Um, so if you've got the money bags, just stand up, please, and start giving out those pound coins to everybody. There's 88 people here. Jenny did account for me. And there's 100 pounds altogether we've got here this morning to give out. Everybody, please take a pound coin. Don't forget Ian on the... Let me see. Roz, come and get your pound coins for, for those who are out in the crash. Ben, do you want to go to the crash? Go make sure they've all got a pound coin, please. Everyone got a pound coin. Ian, have you got one? Ian hasn't yet. Great, everyone got a coin. Great. <clears throat> you are now a pound richer than you expected to be when you left church this morning. Right? What are you going to do with that pound? Given what we have, yeah, think about it in your head. Giving what we have and expecting to see kingdom riches. So what are you going to do with your new riches? How are you going to extend God's kingdom with that new rich riches you have beyond your understanding? It may be you decide to club together with some other people around you or at home. It may be that pound and do something with that money. It may be that that pound will prompt you and I 
to think about the riches that we have and to do something different with maybe what we have in the barn, whatever that may be, not just materially but or financially, maybe in the skills and giftings we have. But you now have the opportunity of leaving here today a pound richer and you have the opportunity to extend God's kingdom in some way with that pound. And not just to God's children, it could be in another way beyond your thinking at the moment. So take the parable of the rich fool. He kept it all there, never saw God's kingdom extended or people blessed or helped. You and I as God's people are called to think about our riches, all that that may mean, and not to just keep them to ourselves, but to use them well and wisely, and maybe in ways that will go beyond our understanding. So when we leave here today, take your pound away with you. Think about what you're going to do with it because you're richer by a pound now and see what else God may be saying to you about your riches, my riches. Let's pray together before we have a song. Father God, we thank you for all those parables that Jesus told stories he made up to help people think about what it means to be part of his kingdom and to share that kingdom with those around him. And Lord, I pray for us all here today as we have thought about that kingdom that Jesus wants us to be part of and also encourage other people to come into. Lord, in the new riches that we have today, in the riches you've already given us in life, may you help us, challenge us, inspire us, in us in helping us give what we have and expecting to see your kingdom grow as we give it back to you amen <laughs>